everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Dr. Music Podcast. Today, I am honored to have Mr. Tony Harnell. Uh, Tony was, of course, the vocalist for Norwegian metal band TNT. He was also the voice behind bands like Westworld with Riot guitarist Mark Reale, uh, Starbreaker with the great Magnus Carlsen. Uh, and there's also a good chance you know him as the Sonic the Hedgehog theme song guy. <laughs> uh, we want to talk about that a little bit, too. Um, we're going to find out what Tony has going on for his schedule now and uh, what we might see from Tony in the future. Tony, welcome to the show. So honored to have you. Thank you so much uh, for having me. I'm much appreciated and, and good seeing you at uh, Rock Timber recently. Yeah. Yeah, and what a band you had at Rock Timber, man. You know, we're used to seeing you uh, with TNT, hearing you with, you know, Ronnie on guitar, of course. And, uh, you know, that band that you had, uh, really something special, man. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I was really blessed to uh, find these guys. And, you know, i got to give full credit to Luis, my bass player, who uh, we started working together in 2019. Uh, I did a one-off show with Striper here uh, in Nashville, and it went really well. Um, but I need—I knew I needed to make some some changes because the band was put together really quickly for that show. Uh, I had, th I think, about two or three weeks to like, you know, hustle something together, um, and it worked great. But uh, it wasn't quite what I was looking for. So uh, I, I, Luis and I. Uh, who Louise, Louise played on that show, we got together and started, you know, really thinking about who would work. And as these festival dates came up in 2022, started getting really serious about it. And he suggested a few people and Garab just, uh, you know, stood out. He was, I knew he was going to, that Ronnie's position <laughs> in the, uh, doing the TNT songs was going to be the hardest one to fill. And, um, yeah, I mean, you were there, so. You know. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, the energy uh, was just like you know we have talked about this the the the, the energy that Ronnie gives off in those TNT songs uh, was there that kind of electricity that runs through his playing yeah. uh, was really uh, Grav doing his doing him uh, he yeah. himself. Uh, but really had the energy that you would expect for those songs. And it was uh, it was really great. Well, hopefully he watches this and he hears the praise because he deserves it. And, and uh, you know, my drummer, Dan Duchette, um, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, everybody just really came and delivered on, on both festivals I did this year. And there's going to be more coming. And, you know, I can talk about that a little bit. Cool. Uh, not sure exactly where it's going to lead, but um, it, it did. Uh, it was kind of just me dipping my toe in the water and seeing what would happen. And it looks like it's um, generated a lot of interest. So I think we're going to see more shows like that coming up in 2023. That is great news, man, because that was a that was a great show. And, you know, we love that TNT material and, and it was filled with TNT material. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I. I I said in my review, you know, I was scraping my jaw off the concrete most of the, the time hearing that voice. And, Very uh, kind words. Thank you. <laughs> it, it, real, it's the God's honest truth. Uh, how do you, you know, it's a, you just turned 60. Uh, you know, you, you said that from the stage, it was right before your birthday. Um, yeah. And that's something to be very, very proud of. Um, you're not 20 anymore. You're doing these songs like a 20 year old. Uh, are there any, is there anything that scares the 60 year old <laughs> Tony Harnell? Is there anything you can't, won't do? Uh, what I, the set I heard was just extraordinary. Really? I mean, what, what goes on, you know, behind the scenes uh, sometimes to prepare for these things is mentally, uh taxing on me i'm you know i'm i'm it's funny you know i didn't realize for most of my life because it just wasn't really uh we didn't have the information and so forth but you know i've been riddled with anxiety my most of my career but i think that's been driving from the very beginning it's been a driving force toward some sort of uh you know and i'm a virgo as well so the perfectionism thing is runs strong in my blood you know yeah. uh and i think that you know when ronnie and i met 
we have that connection of, uh, you know, just striving for absolute, uh, you know, perfection and the best we, well, perfection is not a good word. I'd say just shocking, uh, you know, trying to be the absolute best we could possibly be. Um, and I think that, uh, I feel a lot of pressure and I feel a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the the pressure to live up to the albums that I did 40 years ago, you know, yeah. which is pretty, pretty intense. I mean, if I had any foresight at all in my twenties, I wouldn't have written material that was so <laughs> difficult, you know? Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, in saying that I'm incredibly uh, lucky that I can still do most of it. And uh, mm -hmm. You know, what I could say about it is just that a lot of, of stress goes behind it. And if you I saw an interview with Steve Perry not too long ago where he was talking about how, you know, that that stress of living up to the records is what ultimately kind of pulled him away from performing live, you know. And I feel like that's been a big factor for me, too, is is. But it, except for me, what I do is I put myself through just a little bit of hell almost every show and uh, to varying degrees, you know, of, of stress. And then I just walk through the door and push through it, you know, because I have to. And I hope that when I go do the shows that the fans are somewhat forgiving, you know, but at the same time, I don't want to go up there and be, you know, at least not even close to what they are, they expect to hear i wanted to at least have some familiarity with what they remember you know yeah you know and that's just it i, I like i said I, I you know i went into the review uh it, it, i said it in the review i went into the show thinking that you know okay i'm getting a near 60 year old tony harnell it's not gonna be the same you know um and i understand that and you know I'm, i was hoping for a glimpse of the past well <laughs> it was a stark look at the past it was uh wow uh it well thank you it wasn't you know much different um, thank you i i do appreciate it and it means a lot to me that to hear this and and get the positive reactions that i that i've been getting and you know for people who know me and follow my social media i don't post a lot of video clips um of shows that I do, one of the main reasons other people do and people love them. I am so, again, it comes back to the picky thing. You know, I'm so picky right. about everything that you can post it. And hopefully when you do, it's okay, but I'm not going to post anything unless I feel like good, you know, feel good about it. And so I posted a 19 second clip mm -hmm. on my socials after October and it, it Everybody just really loved it. So I'll probably just keep doing that. I'll take little <laughs> things. And, and then if they want to see more, they can go watch somebody else's clip, you know. But, <laughs> but it's, a re, it's, it's a really good reflection into my psychotic head in terms of how I, how I think about, you know, what I'm doing. On the other hand, what people have to realize and what, what I have to remind myself of is that these festivals and doing shows like this are more stressful than if you get into a groove on the road and you're playing four or five cool. shows a week uh, because we have to gear up from zero and rehearse and yep. pretend like we've been playing a bunch of shows. <laughs> and, you know, every time we do one of these, we all say, and we did this after October, we all say, man, I wish we had another one tomorrow or the next day or, you know, right. uh, cause we'll be better then and we'll be even better and better and better as we go. Right. You know, I hear that from, from artists, you know, they're on tour and they, or, you know, a band that just comes together, it needs to gel. Uh, yeah. you know, there's, uh, you know, it, it gets tighter and tighter as you, as you rehearse or play this, this set. Uh, that's why, you know, I, I came in, I knew you hadn't played a bunch of shows with these guys. Uh, the, I mean, the professionalism, the music, the musicality of it, uh, from from these guys individually and together as a unit, just really amazing, man. Uh, it was, you know, really, really cool. if and if for no other reason, that is reason reason enough that I moved to Nashville. You know, is the accessible musicians um, 
you know, people that I just, I can rehearse right in town with and get, get a show ready. Uh, I still have my New York guitarist for my acoustic shows because I trust him implicitly and I just haven't found, there are plenty of guys here, I'm sure, that would, you know, be amazing. I just haven't found anybody that I gel with and I, and I just like working with him, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool, man. Uh, let's talk about your your Sonic stuff. I have to touch that. Uh, you know, you go to the Spotify page, and you know it's all Sonic, the popular stuff, one to ten. Sonic, hundreds of millions of of plays on the stuff. Uh, that's a, that's well, it's great for the mailbox for sure, right? No, not <laughs> no? for me. No, uh, is a buyout like. Wow. Yeah, it was it was probably the worst decision I ever made in my life. I did it two times. I didn't learn the first time. Part of it is just I, I got to be honest. My my ignorance back when I did the first one was two thousand or two thousand one, and I I've never really played video games. I really don't know a lot about them other than if you can get a song on, you know, it's great. I mean, obviously I'm aware of people being gamers and so forth, but I personally have never been interested in them. So I honestly was like, yeah, okay, sure. And, you know, as the years have gone on, I, I first of all gained a lot of young fans right out of the gate back in the early 2000s. But uh, I see the Spotify page and well, in all fairness, it probably wouldn't matter, but most people probably know this, that, TNT plays don't uh, I don't get right. credited for on my Spotify play. So it's it's kind of only going to be whatever the each record company of the 30 albums I've done in my career, whichever ones they properly tag me on are going to be showing up there. But okay. generally speaking, yeah. So, yeah, I have to see these streams from Sonic all the time and uh and very grateful for the fan support that i've gotten from that but at the same time i just kind of go oh man <laughs> the, the, that was a yeah yeah no no doubt uh it, it's pretty cool too you know i listen to the stuff and it's you know it's uh it's not cheesy it's uh it's really good stuff <laughs> you know i mean the, the the musicianship is crazy great on them you know i mean they're really, yeah solid they're decent yeah solid. yeah for you sure know. um it yeah, was always cool. it, it's they always do everything very very well and it was a japanese producer that was there in new york city when i recorded it when i when i lived up there yeah. um but yeah no it's uh it's it's been a really fun little kind of thing that i just thought was another studio yeah. gig that turned into this whole yeah. Thing, so <laughs> yeah, so, something to be proud of though you know uh not all yeah. that kind of stuff is you know uh, exactly <laughs> the snickers commercial maybe maybe not so much uh you know something like that well you but, know i've done i've done a, i've done i've done some of those as well and right. um you know trust me they uh they can really uh pay the bills but yeah. uh yeah and and you know when you when you do this full time especially now when you consider uh that record sales i mean uh, i think i saw a week ago or something within the last couple of weeks i saw uh, something that said ozzy osbourne number one on billboard with forty five thousand album sales right. the first week, right <laughs> now i don't know about you but i remember in the early 2000s when when the boy bands and the pop artists uh britney and uh mm -hmm. backstreet boys and nsync were all competing for that first week of 2 million sales, yep. you know, yep. and now here we are going number one at 45,000. So you can only imagine how those numbers trickle down to artists like myself. And, and I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been taken away. It used to be such a viable and deserve well-deserved source of income for artists. Think about it. You go in, you spend, you know, I mean, still today, they cost money to make a good record. I mean, don't be fooled. Yeah. I have a home studio right next to me. Mm -hmm. But, and we can do a lot. We can do a lot of great stuff. But the great records that are still being made are still being made in studios, the old-fashioned way, and they cost money. Yeah. Um, so what you end up with, uh, sadly, in today's world is um, you end up with you know, lower quality music from a lot of really great artists because that's just what they're able to do. And so 
I'm just, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but my, the point I'm just trying to make is that with the record sales now being taken away with COVID happening and with all the, th we all just have to, if we can sing and write and stay alive, Hey man, that's what we do. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it yeah. doesn't mean sure. it doesn't take anything away from the, from the artists that we are, we still can write songs and release them and, and play live. That's an art form in itself. Performing live is absolutely a whole thing, you know, whether it's absolutely. a music or electric. Well, you know, and, and you have, the training you i mean you you know what you're doing uh you're not winging it sometimes <laughs> maybe uh, more singing than in life you know <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i mean that's you know this life thing is really difficult um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, over my head yeah. <laughs> i'm telling you uh none of us are really great at that i don't think but um you know i i look at you and and i've had a few voice lessons myself but i i see technique and uh the way you sing, um, and I'm sure the way you warm up, but the way you grip your microphone. Um, and I went through this with Josh Todd of Buck Cherry, does the same thing, grips it with two fingers. Uh, you know, I'm looking at the shots afterwards or after I photograph you, and I'm I see that, you know, and there's not it's not a grip on the mic, it, that that tightness that you might get. Uh that's all part of it, isn't it? I mean, that that whole technique. You know what? It's interesting. If you if you if if you watched me hold the microphone 25, 30, 40 years ago, it might have been different. Um, it might even be different from song to song now. I honestly don't know what I'm doing until I see <laughs> pictures or video and then I go, oh, OK, that's interesting. You know, it's, yeah. it's actually to be really honest with you, it's not something I'm thinking about when I'm on stage. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It, you know, that's just it. Uh, it's just so natural for you. You look very comfortable. You look so loose. Uh, you know, it's not that tight thing and not, you know, it's just that, that and that, you know, the, the power just comes out through, through the voice. Uh, it's, it's what many, many years ago, uh, we were playing with Striper at, uh, at, at the garden in New York city, Madison square garden. And, uh, my voice coach came. And uh, he's a very famous guy in, in the singing world. You know, he works with uh, everybody from uh, Lady Gaga to Bono to Mick Jagger, Christina Aguilera. He's worked with Sebastian, um, John Bon Jovi. I, I was probably one of his first uh, artists that got signed to a label. I started going to him when I was 18. So he really knew me. And so, you know, we're talking about, 87 and uh and he came backstage and he said man you that was amazing vocally but you have to try to make it look harder because it looks <laughs> too, you're making it look he go, he said to me as an audience member i was knowing what it takes to do what you're doing i i knew how difficult it was but but i was hoping you'd make it look harder for the audience because they don't know how hard it is, you know, and like, <laughs> but, but you, but I, but I said to him, but you know, you made it easier for me. And so, I mean, I'm just doing what I, so that's interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, on one hand, I hope that after this many years, I look relaxed on stage, you know, but the truth of the matter is sometimes at least in the early stages, I'm acting. You know, yeah. because I'm uh, trying to get over nerves usually for the over the you know first few songs. So. Wow, wow, that's and that's incredible to hear. You know, as long as you've been doing it, and that, you know, as I mean, you you have to trust in your voice uh, for sure. I mean, you know your limitations. Uh, you know, to to still have that anxiety, uh, and I think that's part of the uh, that's part of that electricity that you have. Uh, you know what I tell young singers that that i that i work with because i'm also a vocal coach um mm -hmm. i tell them that if you aren't worried before a show if you're not nervous at least maybe not worried isn't the right word but if you're not nervous there's something you should you should be worried actually that's what i tell them i say if you're not nervous you should really be worried because there's something to be said for um punching through those ner those nerves and really showing up on stage i just feel like if you're too yeah you know it's just another day at the office kind of thing 
you're you're getting that's what you're going to portray on stage you know yeah yeah you don't want to dial it in you know call one in and uh yeah put it put it all out there for sure yeah uh, you know, I, I want to want to get into a little bit of TNT stuff. Um, yeah. you know, certain things, you know, we all know the 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 popular stuff. I, I got a couple of questions about some oddball stuff. Uh, the Firefly album, yeah. uh, only the thief, uh, yeah. whistles at night. Uh, really interesting stuff. And I talked to Ronnie about you know the influence of his wiccan beliefs and stuff like that and in his current music um and he told me it was essential it was you know wh who he is um that song tell me about the recording of that song because it's apparently recorded outdoors on alternative yeah. instruments uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what what does that mean there's got to be a great story behind that one right you know, I'm sure it involved some some alcohol and and some and some some plants of some kind. Um, but uh, we, I recall having a do, um, which is for those that don't know, it's an Australian instrument uh, that's kind of uh, hollowed out wood, and it's got. Uh, anyway, so I had one of those, and I was very large, on, usually very very large. So I was sitting on a chair with that kind of singing into it. So you'll hear a lot of, you know, Yo, you know, and all that stuff that's <laughs> going on. That's, that's happening in there. Um, and then we just kind of invited a bunch of our friends to the studio and we were sitting right outside the studio and, you know, just gave everybody something to bang on or something to strum. And uh, that's, <laughs> that's what, that's what happened. The, the song title. Now, whether this is true or not uh, came from, um Ronnie walking around in the middle of the night with some I think I might have even been there it's it's been so long ago but uh with with some Japanese friends and uh we heard a whistling in the distance you know and somebody said oh only the thief whistle, whistles at night and we're like what do you mean and they're like well it's it's kind of their their signal to or whoever they're teaming up with to steal from people um so that's that's where it came from, and uh, I don't even know if there were any other meaningful lyrics in there. We just had that title. <laughs> that was that's pretty cool, you know. I, I'm just you know listening to it and uh, you know seeing that outdoor alternative instrument thing. It was unusual, you know. It's not yeah. not usual uh, TNT stuff. <laughs> uh, but after that song too, "Heaven's Gone," uh, yeah, follows only the thief. On the Wikipedia page, it says the label declared Angels Ride and Heaven's Gone as offensive, and that's why they're... American. American label okay. only. Yeah. Okay, on the Firefly and Live record. Yeah, yeah. Uh, without telling the band, well, at least without my knowledge, the record came out without those two songs, and in my opinion, uh, they were two of the best songs on the album, especially Angels Ride. Yeah. Uh, was was a travesty that it wasn't included because it just gave the fans a false idea of what the record actually was, you know. Uh, and it was, uh, yeah, they were deemed uh, they were deemed sacrilegious by the label. Wow! I, and and I, con I, con I contacted the the label. I won't say who or the, it's not hard to look it up and people can if they want but um i i reached out and i was like well, what what is the purpose of you know and it's well it, it's sacrilegious and i'm not going to put it out and i said but labels should be the ones fighting against censorship from uh the outside world not the censor you know yeah. <laughs> so yeah uh that I that really really rubbed me the wrong way it was the first time in my career that uh, anything I'd ever done had been censored like that. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was really strange. And I'm thinking, you know, it's Shrapnel uh, record label. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, wow, that's they've put out a bunch of stuff that's, you know, could be deemed offensive. Uh, you know, yeah, God has left the building thing. Uh, but I don't, I, I just didn't understand that. Uh, and, and that that's, yeah, that's I don't think he understood what was behind either of the of the two songs, uh, and um, uh, I'm not going to get into it now. But they right, right. they were they were uh, 
Yeah. He, they, he just misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's his choice, I guess. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be 40 years of TNT. Was that, that's this year, right? Um, anything that you guys, that you personally would, would like to commemorate that? Uh, have you have you talked to Ronnie about commemorating the 40th anniversary? Because you guys, I mean, you don't you're not doing TNT music, uh, but I know you you still talk to each other, your friends. Um, yeah. He loves you dearly. Uh, he told me so. Um, you know, Ditto. and yeah, I know that. And and there's a you know there's still a a relationship there, and TNT is is still a possibility, right? I mean. I mean, the, the thing the thing about it is like I can make it really simple. People, um, TNT was is, is not a household name, clearly. Um, but uh, but for people who love the band, it's a very important band, and I understand that. So if you're a fan, you're you know you're gonna dig in a little deeper than most people. Most of the stuff that's gone that's that's swirling around uh, you know the band is just simply either not true or a little bit true uh, and embellished uh, greatly, um, you know. So the whole thing is really, it, it generally just comes down to economics and business. And what I mean by that is um, how we run things, how it's organized, um, how the everything from, you know, the promotion of the band, the way the band is presented all the way down to how, um, you know, travel, as is arranged and, or, you know, whatever. And, and for a band like TNT, it can be challenging. So uh, yeah. most of the time it's just business stuff. That's been really the issue or outside people working with the band. There have been a couple of instances uh, in 2017 where, um, you know, we had a, uh, there, there, where there was a label literally meddling in our, sort of internal business and uh, driving wedges between band members, between Ronnie and myself. And they unfortunately succeeded. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's why I won't be working with that particular label in the future. But, um, you know, we, we've, we've decided that if we're going to do anything in the future, it's going to be with a very united front and we're, we're going to operate the way other, other uh, organizations do where if people know on the outside, even if their agents and managers working with us, they know that we are extremely solid and they can't pull that stuff yeah. uh, and try to try to pull us apart, but we're fine. We've always been fine. Even if, even at, when things were really, really rough and really hard, we communicated and we've always communicated. And uh, that's just the way it's been. So brothers for life. And if we can work together again, um, it will be, it'll be, it'll be amazing. And it'll be under great conditions. Uh, yeah. I would expect. expect. Uh, that's special. You know, that's really cool. Um, you know, I, one of my favorite songs ever uh out of not just out of your catalog out of all the songs that, that have had been in my ears for you know my time here love's dying wish um yeah is something tremendously special to me uh love that stuff starbreaker uh great stuff yeah, it's not something everybody knows. It's not something that's available uh, to everybody either. Um, you know, does is it frustrating sometimes? You know, you do a song like that, um, and it, it's obviously it's got to be emotional. Uh, that's it's just, you know, <laughs> I mean, I weep sometimes when I hear that song. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just it's it's it fills me. You know what I mean? It's it's very emotional. Um, you can't put that in the set list, right? Everybody will get lost. Uh, <laughs> is that frustrating? Yeah, well, sometimes? well, you that know, that kind of thing. Say sorry, the last part again. Say that last thing. Is that frustrating for you sometimes? That you know that kind of thing, where you you do a song like that, and you know you you'd love to play it, but you don't because you know it might get lost. Well. You know, the whole thing with this with this electric show I have here in the States is that it's it's a progression. So, uh, of course, I'm going to start off playing only 80s TNT songs. 
But as time goes on, yeah, I'll put in some Westworld. I'll put in maybe a little bit of solo stuff or, you know, I mean, I am planning to, to do a proper record at some point that, that is mine. Uh, and, and so, yeah, but I mean, but it's like that for Aerosmith. It's like that for, right. you know, every big act pretty much. I mean, um, for the most part, they'll put a new record out and go out and play the old songs and maybe play one song. You know, the Scorpions just put out a great record. So they, I think they were playing more songs from the new record, but it was a great record. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, of course it is. And there's a certain, you know, there's a certain amount of, uh, I guess, sadness that goes with that as an artist, you know, that right. I've done so much work that I put so much into and, and um, at the end of the day, it's it's not about how good it was. It's about um, how much promotion it got, and and the timing. You know, what year did it come out, and was it was yep. it the popular thing? You know, um, I think I put I've made music since the '80s that has been you know probably would have been perhaps even bigger than what I did in the '80s, but no one will ever know. <laughs> uh, it, you know. One of the reasons I'm not going to do Starbreaker uh, or or projects, a lot of projects like that going forward is um, that I wanted to tour that music. Three albums is enough to go play shows, but Magnus doesn't really play shows. So it kind of, um, he plays a few here and there, but I wanted really to to do music that I can go out and support live. And right. so that's what I'm going to be focused on going forward. But I will put some of those songs into the show for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, well, just... And if you come see my acoustic show, which is a completely different animal, I do have Westworld songs. I have solo songs. I also have the classic TNT songs reworked. Um, it, it's a beautiful show, completely different, very vocally oriented uh, stories. I tell stories about you know, different, different things, uh, in, in involving the songs and so forth. And it, it's really, people really love it. And I love doing those shows yeah. a lot. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's something different, you know, it's, a, it's really yeah. cool to see that side, uh, for yeah. sure. And that's, you know, the, the mercury train type stuff. Morning wood, yeah. mer morning wood, mercury train, uh, wildflowers, you know, I've done yeah. three acoustic albums. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Really cool. Um, you know, I want to introduce a, a, a few kids, younger guys to your music, uh, to your voice. What, what's the first thing to play for them? What, you know, what Oh you man. Feel, I what mean, what would you feel represents you? The, the... That's a really tough question because people kind of know me for the harder, you know, metal -y type stuff. But again, like I said, I've, I've put out three, you know, kind of acoustic based albums and, and uh, you know, they, one of them at least has all original music on it. Um, it's a very hard thing to say. I think what I do is when I'm going to introduce somebody to my music, I try to assess what music they like, because I know that I've got something in my arsenal that, <laughs> will appeal to them so if they're into uh the beatles i'm not going to play them uh the you know something off tell no tales you know um right. i may play them something i did later in my career so uh, right. it's it's i wish i had just the definitive definitive uh, answer for you people tend to appreciate my ballads a lot i don't know <laughs> yeah oh yeah uh it, well it's that i'm telling you man it's that that crazy strong high voice uh northern lights you know for example uh just it's just it, it lifts people it, it brings you to another place and uh it's, it's something special that you had it's a real gift um that's the, that's the best thing you could ever say to me because that's literally all I think I ever wanted to do, you know, uh, going back to the beginning, I was weird. I, I don't think I was, I mean, obviously once, once the fringe benefits came into play, I wasn't running away from them, but I didn't get into music for the girls or the, the, you know, I was just so into the music and, uh, um, and the other stuff came, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but, but, but I still, that's still my, that's always been my driving force. And so when I hear something like that, it makes me feel, you know, because sometimes it's not easy to be in this line of work. So when I hear that, it makes me feel like, 
I did something worthwhile. <laughs> oh yeah, no, seriously. Uh, it's really it's it changes it changes life. I can't you know like there's a lot of music that I can't imagine yeah. living my life without. Um, yeah, and you know your voice is a big part of that for oh, just me, many it's, millions of people. You. Uh, it's it's Thank really you. really something special, and it's uplifting uh, too. You know, it's uh, you know you hear it and it everything feels better. Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's great. Um, I know you've wanted to work with great Sorry. producer. Um, you've talked about working with great producers. A few names come to mind for me. Uh, who comes to mind for you? Is there a producer that you would really want to work with? I mean, I would love to work with Mutt Lang. Uh, it would, you know, be a, a million, probably 20 million to one, 200 million to one that that'll ever happen. But, but that is a dream. I think a lot of my interest in working with somebody like him or, um, I mean, there's, there's quite a few guys that, and women that I'd love to work with. Um, I think of him just because when I play music for other people and I'm sort of educating them on certain things, I find a lot of his songs come up, uh, whether it be the, the great foreigner album that he did, or, uh, obviously the Def Leppard stuff, um, Brian Adams and Hart, and it just goes kind of on and on. It really does. But everything, everything that he was a part of, I feel like the singer sang just a bit better, you know? Uh, and I want to know, I want to see what, what is he going to do? with me and my, you know, what is he going to, how is he going to transform my songwriting? Uh, you know, what would a person like that do? Because as much as I've released and I've released so much music and I've worked with some really talented producers mm -hmm. and engineers, <clears throat> um, I just haven't felt that I've had, I've been, a, I have had the opportunity yet to work with somebody who's really pushed me uh, as much as I'd like to be you know but yet at the same time get what i am going for or what i'm about not try to make me something different but pull out the best you know right um and i'd love to experience that before i'm done <laughs> you know? yeah, that's cool that's cool um and i want to respect your time i know you got things uh i i could talk to you for a year and a half <laughs> um, uh, well you know if there's yeah. you don't have to rush i mean if there's more stuff you want to it's fine yeah well you know i just i love just shooting the shit with you man uh yeah. <laughs> it's great you know this is great conversation um what's the biggest lesson you've learned uh over the years you know i mean you've had your your challenges uh in both life yeah. and music um yeah you, you know you've you're a veteran you've been there uh, in many different situations uh, where, you know, the, the business side of it that has been ugly, uh, the business side that has, that has been promising and good for you. Um, yeah. Out of all of those things, what's, what's the biggest lesson you've learned? That no matter how much you know, you don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a lesson to be learned the next day. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I think that communicating communication is key to the whole thing that we're doing right now as humans on Earth. Um, so the better that we can communicate uh, to people that we're in intimate relationships with, people that are in business relationships with us, uh, to our fan base, because now we have social media. So the better we can communicate I think, um, you know, the more good can come. Uh, and I think we're seeing that in the world today uh, in terms of bad communication and what that can do. Um, yeah. So that's probably at the top of my list, along with uh, trusting your gut about people. Uh, I think the, the biggest, um, some of the hardest times I've been through have been when I ignored that and then went forward into something that was, oh my God, I saw the red flags. Why wasn't I paying attention? You know? Right, right. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll be coming up in, in Jan, at the end of January, I'll have five years sober. Uh, and I think, Congrats. you know, one of the, one of the biggest things I've learned there is just, um, how much, even when it wasn't affecting me 
all the time how much it was affecting me yeah. uh, in terms of my decision making and my ability to handle problems, you know, that would come. Um, and then just losing a lot of having going through the cancer thing myself and, and back in 20, 2009 and losing pretty much almost my whole family uh, in a very short period of time to various things from cancer to uh, dementia, um, you know, and recently lost my father. Uh, it's just kind of been like, wow, you know, we really come here alone and we really leave alone. Uh, and, yeah. and so there's just a lot, I mean, but, it, but in saying all of this, I'm constantly seeking, um, constantly trying to learn. Um, I'm very aware and conscious of, uh, uh, mistakes I've made in the past, but I try not to dwell on them or live in them. Um, and so, yeah, you know, just eternally growing and realizing that if we ever, reach a point where we feel we don't need to grow we might as well not be here <laughs> yeah yeah and you know I, I explained that to my kids you know I'm, I'm you know getting up there myself I'm gonna be 54 uh you, you know we went to baby showers we went to weddings and you know bachelor parties and things like that and then it's moved on you know <laughs> to funerals and wakes uh you know, right uh it, it's the life cycle and uh sometimes it's not yeah not easy uh I, I mean i spent i spent some years yeah i mean that's you're exactly right i mean that's what happens it changes from yeah from all of that to then you know and i mean i've had so many friends younger than me and my age you know pass away over the years uh that one of the things you know i've uh, for years i was kind of i don't want to talk about my age and then at some point I was like, fuck that. I'm fucking proud of it. You know, <laughs> I'm like, you know I fucking made it. I made yep. it. You know, I, yep. I, I still have, I hope I have a long way to go, but you know, I mean, at this point, the fact that I'm able to, you know, like get up on stage and do what I do and still be okay. And uh, yeah, you know, health, health stuff's going to come in there as, as you start getting older, but trying mm -hmm. to take care of myself. And I think I'm just kind of really uh, going to own it going yeah. forward and say hey man i'm hell fucking yeah. here i am <laughs> hell yeah and and you know i heard you say that from the stage you know and i, and I was like that's right man stand straight and proud and be you know be proud and because the way you sound too is uh you know that's it, it's like a freak of nature man <laughs> how, you it, how you do it at 60 like that is uh you know and and everybody takes notice of that uh you know this is a guy that takes care of himself uh you know he's he, it's important to him and it was uh, it's pretty great Thank you. Thank um if you could sit down with any living person um have a conversation ask them anything you want uh who would that be oh man any living person um that's a great question uh you know the first person <laughs> i'm sure i'm gonna get a lot of funny feedback from this one but i mean the first person that popped into my head was jim carrey jim carrey yeah nice. <laughs> I, just, I love it i just think a i would laugh be laughing my ass off number one. <laughs> um and i think he's really i think he's a really cool guy and i'd like cool. to understand uh you know where what he's figured out in life uh so there's that um Oh, uh, there's, there's a lot of people, uh, and, and at the, I, I hesitate to name them because, you know, it's such a polarizing situation that we're in that yeah. I don't want anybody to go, oh. yeah, please, so, please but, <laughs> don't go don't there. That. You don't need that aggravation. No, <laughs> nobody needs that, man. That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. Jim Carrey, nobody would, nobody would guess that, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, when you look at back at your catalog, um, you know, you got TNT, you got you know, all so many th different things. Is there anything that I don't want to say not proud of, but anything you don't care for? In 20, uh, 2018, I recorded two albums and they both came out in 2019. Um, I was going through the beginning of uh, sobriety. 
uh, it was a really rough time for me. Um, I wasn't having a good time in life. And that was, you know, those two albums were um, albums I did because I needed to, especially the Starbreaker album, I really needed to do something at that moment in time. So it was very good timing. But uh, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, and looking back on that one and then the one that came after it, honestly, and I'm probably the only guy in my situation that would even talk like this, but that's just where I've, where I've gotten to, my friend. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just feel like I, I did them to keep myself busy, to get through what I was, help get through what I was going through because art always helps. And, um, and to pay the bills, you know, and looking back at it, the Starbreaker record has a lot of beautiful musical moments. It really does. And I think it's a, it's a cool album. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not happy with, with a lot of it. And a lot of it has to do with um, the lyrical content, I think, was just a lot of, of emotional stuff that was lies on my part. So I don't like to feel that way, that I was, that I was like, I don't know, just writing from the wrong place. And, uh, and then with the Love Killers album, I just, I just don't love the songs. I don't love the approach and I don't love the music. I don't really love the vocal that much. And that's ter terrible for me to say because there are some really talented people that were working on the album, mm -hmm. but it was kind of not my vision. It was somebody else's vision to put me into those uh, songs that I really didn't write. And so... I don't have a lot of love for that, for the love. I don't have a lot of love for love killers, right. uh, but, um, but other than that, and again, in saying that there are some nice moments on both albums and some stuff that I, I probably should be more, you know, should be proud of. But, uh, but other than that, I feel pretty good about everything that I've put out. You know, even if it's not like the greatest thing in the world, there's always something I can listen to and say, I really like that. I like what I said there. I like how I sang that, you know? Yeah. And that's cool. You know, I, it's great for you to hear you say that. Cause as a fan, I sit and listen and there's really not anything that I don't like, you know, there's some stuff I like better than others, but there's really, it's a solid catalog. You have. I mean, it really, I can't say that about too many people, you know, and I, I don't think uh, the artist would say that about their you know catalog a lot of times like yourself some things just don't click with you or you know you've lost that the feeling that you had or you know it's yeah. just not it, it's not sitting with you uh yeah i mean i mean ronnie ronnie and i sometimes talk about realized fantasies because we were we were under so much you know there was just a lot going on with the band at the time a lot of money was being spent um there was just it was a little chaotic and so that's that's the, what he said to me that, yeah the know, result he didn't the like result it. of the record is that a lot of people really like it and i have to remind yeah. him of that sometimes because we both kind of have this negative feeling about the album because of what was going on around it mm -hmm. so that it's hard for us to actually look at the work itself you know yeah um, yeah he said that that yeah, i asked him that same question and he said realize fantasies uh yeah he just doesn't like the sound of it uh you know it's just yeah it just just you know like you said it's just uh it, it's a personal thing you're so close to it uh, yeah. You know, whereas we stand back and we listen to the the byproduct of what you were going through, uh, yeah. and it sounds great. You know, I, I love the record. Uh, but yeah, when you're that close, you know, the, uh, there's different facets for sure. Uh, yeah. you, your story incredible. Um, going to Norway, being part of TNT. Uh, you know that that whole transatlantic kind of thing. Um, your your sobriety um you know the things you've gone through as a person um and your career you ever think about writing it down like oh yeah. yes yeah 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 um i have started writing a book probably 10 times and so i have material uh and what it's going to take is me just continuing to write after I start and I, I have so many good ideas but yeah 
even before I was a musician, my, my childhood is a, is a crazy, wacky, weird, unusual story. <laughs> um, there, there are a couple of things I tell people sometimes about it in one sentence, and they're just like, holy crap, how did you even make it here? You know, um, so, so there's a lot to, you know, and it would, it, it, this is important. This is probably one of the reasons I've struggled so much with it. I want it to be a book that ultimately has some sort of message, uh, uh, some kind of outcome of some kind. It doesn't have to be that my life is over. It just, I want it to have some kind of a, a, a goal at the end, you know, and I'm not, I just haven't decided what that is exactly. It could just be telling the story, which is fine. Um, but it is, it is a wild story. And I want it to be a book that appeals to a, a wide group of people about, you know, just uh, what, what can happen uh, in, a, in broken marriages, referring to my childhood and my my both my parents uh, marrying multiple times as I was growing up, you know, I and uh, just a lot of the different things that that I experienced, um, and and how it affected my adult life and how it affected my career and decisions I've made. Um, you know, there's just a lot there, but I want it to be done with love and in a, in a in a way that is ultimately going to help people. I don't want my story just to be. It's not about Hey, look at how hard I, I didn't. I mean, other people had it way worse than me. I, you know, believe me when I tell you that. But, but at the same time, I do want to have some kind of, hey, I know what that feels like. You know, I want to reach people and have it mean something. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, I just talked to Chris and Pelletary, uh, and, you know, this is a guy that woke up at nine years old and both of his parents were dead. Uh, wow. They committed suicide, you know, so. Uh, you know, to, to for him to come that way from nine years old and and be the person he is and the player that he is, uh, you know, he said he, he he never he never wanted to do that uh, write a book. Uh, he lets his music uh, tell his story. So you know, there's 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 that. Uh, you know, and you know your music too. Uh, there's a lot of my life. If people, if, and for some of my hardcore fans, they know this. If you go through my catalog and you really listen to the words, you can, you can figure out every relationship I was in. You can figure out <laughs> where, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff in, in my songs that refer to my, every aspect of my life. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. And, you know, it'd be cool to have a book, I think, with uh, you know, your story written and then maybe a CD to accompany, accompany it. I've already I've already I've already thought of it and it's yeah. already it's already something I want to do. I mean, one idea would be to uh, to have a, um, a, a an album coincide with a book and the album, uh, each song on the album would because lyrics, you know, I mean, you, you write very short stories you know right uh so so each song would re would would represent a chapter in the book and each song mm -hmm. each chapter in the book would elaborate on the story of the song right that's, that's so that awesome was, yeah i i hope i i hope I'm, I'm hesitant to say this because i don't want someone else to steal the idea because <laughs> i don't think <laughs> it's ever been i don't think it's ever been done yeah, I you know, and I don't think so either. Uh, and and I just think it's such a cool idea. Uh, maybe you know, we should edit that. Maybe we should edit this part out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, you let you let me know um, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, but I, I I really think that that you know that that would be an incredible thing. Um, you know, interactive in in two ways. You know, reading the the, the written word and uh, hearing it uh, come to life. Pretty pretty yeah. great. Yeah, it's yeah. a great idea. Um, uh, last thing for you, I, I want to let you go. This is uh, it's been so so great with you, Tony. Um, something on the top of your bucket list, something you know in your personal life or your professional life, uh, something that you've always wanted to do, and and you know, you something you really want to do in your life. You know. In, in my career, I really just want to put out, I've put out a lot of music and I, I have taken a step back from writing and recording. I mean, I've been writing 
I always write, but I've taken a step back from recording or releasing music while I just focus on playing live, you know. Uh, but I really want to put out a record that, whether it's, it doesn't matter to me if it sells a lot. I just want to put out a record that is 100% me. I'm not really sure what that looks like 100% either, but uh, it'll happen. And it'll probably happen within the next few years. Um, and, you know, I'd like to see myself um, just, I haven't been living in an area or in a situation where I've been able to do a lot of surfing, which is what I grew up doing as a kid, you know, and I, I was very good at it. I'd like to, I'd like to, uh, you know, within the next five years, be in a place where I can surf regularly. You know, yeah, I, I really, yeah. I'm a pretty simple, I'm very simple. I don't, I don't long for, uh, expensive things. I don't dream about, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I dream more about how I'm, am I happy? Am I living the life I want to live? Am I doing what I want to do every day, you know? And yeah. so those are the kinds of things that um, really mean a lot to me more than maybe, uh, you know, I, do I want to skydive or do I want, I mean, if I do, I do great, but right. it's more important that every day is filled with joy, you know, for me. Man, that's great, man. It's uh it's so cool. Uh the humility and and you know who you are as a person, man. It's a special, special person. It's, uh it took a long time and it's still a lot of work. Um, I do want to remind everybody that I have acoustic shows coming up and there there's there are more on the way. They're constantly being booked. So I have three coming up in uh two coming up in Florida in no early November, uh Winter Park in Tampa. Uh, November 3rd and 4th and October 13, 14 and 15, I play Woodbury, Connecticut, Oneida, New York and Teaneck, New Jersey. Nice. Nice. Anything towards the Midwest? There's more. I have been assured and reassured by both agents that more shows are coming. So Man, that's cool. That's cool. I'm in the Chicago area here. So, uh, you know, we I get a lot of requests for coming and I, I, I want to go back. I haven't been since I haven't played Chicago to my members. I don't think since 89. Well, that's not true. I probably played there in 2015 with the band I was with for about five minutes, but, uh, <laughs> yes. yeah. Say no we more, all know. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it would be um, great to have you. Back. You know, I had tickets for you and uh, uh, Michael Sweet right before you know the anarchy, yeah. uh, the end of the world there, yeah. um, and Mariah Formica, of course. Uh, yeah, you know Mariah. Ooh, she's doing great now. She is. Yeah. It's so great. You know, she she contacted me right. You know, I did an interview with Michael. And she contacted, she was on one of his records um, as, as a guest on one of the songs. And she contacted me right after that and asked me if I would talk to her, you know, have her on the show, a uh, 15 year old girl, you know, and I thought, sure. You know, I, I love, you know, just embracing that youth, uh, you know, and, and her voice then on the one song was incredible. Yeah. But, you know, I have her on and she is this brilliant, just well-balanced, level-headed kid, 15-year-old oh, yeah. kid. And I thought, this girl is going, you know, and that was before The Voice and all of that. And I thought, there's no way that anything is going to hold this girl back. No. Uh, and sure enough, you know, just from that point on, it just kept happening. Now, she, you know, she's 21 years old and she's on the road constantly in these huge shows uh and people are taking notice uh she is incredible she really yeah is. yeah it's, yeah it's, I, I actually think she's probably uh the best young rock singer yeah out yeah. there i mean in, in many ways uh especially yeah just her power and her her oh. range is incredible yeah oh. And, and, you know, I know she's well-trained. Uh, she, she takes it seriously. Uh, it's not a big uh, party. You know, she, right. she gets up there and she makes sure that she kills it each and every time. Oh yeah. And uh, boy, I've seen them probably four, four times now, I think uh, just incredible every time. I mean, I haven't been lucky enough to see 
them live. I did visit uh, the band when they were recording here in Nashville. I've, I stopped by the studio and visited them, but uh, I have not seen them live yet. But yeah, no, she's amazing. The whole band is great. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, cool. I'm sure that uh, there's a lot more we're going to hear from them going forward. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Well, Tony, I, I'll let you go. Um, this has been great, man. And please uh, contact me, come back and see me. Um, come to Chicago, see me, uh, whenever you got something going on, uh, you need a, an outlet, uh, please. Uh, my door is always open. Um, I'd love to shoot you again, man. That's yeah. All, that anytime. sounds bad. I love those uh, pictures. <laughs> They're great. You know, and I know your, your, your dad was a photographer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But actually I, I am too. I just haven't been shooting a lot. I, I had a, a scholarship when I started college at 17, I had my portfolio from high school wow. so I, i've been in and out of it over the years i've shot a few of my own album covers and but uh awesome. yeah but my dad my dad was was something else and he uh he was an activist as well so he used his photography and his journalism to bring light and the last project he was really involved with was the dolphin slaughters in japan so wow. he was doing quite a lot of uh that. really quite dangerous stuff involving that because his life would have, you know, was at risk uh, hiding and shooting. Wow. Uh, yeah, he was pretty, he was, uh, he was determined to bring light to things and he, he wouldn't stop at anything. So that's cool, man. That's cool. And, you know, for you to, to like my photographs and like my work, uh, that means a, a lot. It really, really does. Uh, Cause you know, you know, a good image when you see one. So uh, yeah. You know, and that's it's special. Thank you. I, I yeah, thank, really appreciate no, it. No, thank, thank, thank you for sure. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let you go. Please, uh, you know, I will put the links uh, to your singer society where people can actually train with you. Right. Yeah, I'm, cl I'm closing for the time being. I'm I'm pausing my course, but I am uh, always. Um, there's a button people can push and book lessons with me. That's always going to be there. Um, All right. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. All right. Take care, bud. Talk soon. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.